Hey, welcome back to Senate Education. We are now shifting gears to H426. Ms. Wasserman. Good afternoon. I almost said good morning because I don't know what time of day it is anymore. <laughs> Uh, Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, so I will walk you through the changes to draft 1.5 of you. your committee's amendment to the uh, House pass version of H-426 relating to um, school facilities. Um, the previous versions of the amendment that you saw were strike all amendments. Uh, since you've decided to go back to a lot of what, to what was in the, the bill as passed by the House with some, some additions. This is um, gonna be some instances of amendment. Um, and I chose to add full sections just for, in some parts for clarity, um, but you can let me know if that, if that uh, works best in terms of how you'd like to present it. Um, so uh, the first instance of amendment is in the findings section of the underlying bill. Um, so this was findings and intent, and I will be changing the section heading here in section one uh, to findings, intent, and, and purpose because the, the language that is added here in yellow, um, this was proposed by the Agency of Education. Uh, you saw this, I think that was yesterday, who knows anymore. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the purpose, uh, with respect to the purpose of the funding for the, um, the funding in the bill for, for the COVID specific um, inventory and uh, coordinator that's being hired. And Ms. Um, Wilson, so I'm just going to uh, ask you to pause there for one moment. Sure. Uh, Senator Lyons, just so you know, we are starting uh, to do a walkthrough of the new draft on H426. There you go. Thank you. Um, so this subsection E is just being added to that, um, uh, that section one of the underlying bill. Um, and it says that the purpose of the funding in the act is to allow schools and uh, supervisory unions and, su and supervisory dis districts to use their ESSER allocations to improve conditions for health and safety of students and staff and to address other eligible facilities needs and to put the state in a position of addressing the backlog of uh, school facilities needs in an equitable and efficient manner. Um, section two of the bill, uh, as a reminder, in section two of the underlying bill, there was a requirement for the Agency of Education to come up with some school facilities standards and for the state board to up update their capital outlay financing formula rule. In the version as passed by the House, there was $100,000 appropriated to the state board um, to allow them to hire a contractor for technical assistance to do to help them update their rulemaking. And I believe you heard some testimony that the, it was uh, more appropriately appropriated to the Agency of Education um, as they would be the ones to provide this technical assistance. So this second instance of amendment is um, changing who that appropriation is going to. So it's being changed from the state board to the agency of education. Um, the third instance of amendment is um, striking out in full what was in section three of H-426, which was the school facilities conditions assessment. And I've struck it out entirely because you are now um, proposing to combine this idea of doing the sort of shorter term inventory of school facilities with the, as well as a, a conditions assessment in the longer term. Um, so I just thought it would be easier to strike out the section altogether to kind of, because there were multiple changes in that section. Um, so I can just go through this new language. Um, so this has I changed the title to reflect that as an inventory and conditions assessment. And in subsection A, um, by September 1st, the Secretary of Education and Commissioner of BGS would issue an RFP for the school facilities inventory and conditions assessment to ascertain the extent of need for additional support to school districts as a result of COVID-19 
and to inform AOE of the statewide school facilities needs and costs. Subsection B has um, the secretary contracting with a third party to do both of these projects, the inventory and the assessment. Yes, uh, Senator Persley. So is any of this language from the original bill or this is all new language you've created? Um, it is, I've combined, I've combined the old, the assessment language with the inventory <laughs> language pro proposed by AOE um, and sort of mashed them together as much as possible to um, stick with the, so all of the original language on the assessment is in this right here. Um, and I've tried, I used as much as possible of the AOE's proposal and inventory to include in here. There was some repetitive language, so I didn't want to be, I didn't want to duplicate what, what was there. So um, I, I think I've addressed as much as possible without being repetitive. Um, mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Um, so for example, in subsection A, the purpose of the inventory and, and conditions assessment of what it was looking at, that is a combination of both what was in the inventory language and the assessment language. Does that help? Yeah, it, yeah. I, it looked different and a little weird, but I figured that's what happened. That's kind of a mixture of the two. Um, and I tried to break it down into phases in subsection C, so maybe that will help explain it or give an outline for it a little bit more. Um, so in subsection B, the inventory is being completed by January 15th of 2022, and the assessment is October 1st, 2022. And that's sticking with the dates that were in both um, for both the underlying bill for the assessment and what AOE proposed for the inventory. Subsection C um, says that this uh, third party that's hired to do this work shall conduct the inventory and assessment in two phases. Um, first, the inventory phase of the contract shall include collecting information about the current state of school facilities and immediate plans to invest in school facilities, and then has a list of what this um, would include. And so this is all language that was in the inventory proposal that you saw. Okay. Um, so Any questions there up to this point? Okay, great. Um, so that's just info on the facilities, um, age of buildings, mechanical systems, review of school facilities, and the building, building systems condition and performance to address health and safety of students and employees. Um, the assessment phase of the contract includes a planning phase that utilizes the expertise of the consultant and other stakeholders to finalize the evaluation criteria and methodology for collection of data. Um, it also looks at sufficient information to assist the General Assembly to establish a ranking system on how you prioritize the, the greatest areas of need. And then um, I've listed those categories here. Uh, so those are, this was all in the, the bill as passed. Um, capacity and utilization, safety and security infrastructure, accessibility, technology infrastructure, capacity to deliver STEAM, and then uh, building systems condition and performance, which would include energy efficiency improvements and indoor air quality to ad address health and safety of students and employees. I will note that if you look at the inventory phase, so um, bottom of page two, starting on line 19, the subdivision, and you move on to page three, the subdivisions B and C, the review of school facilities conditions, and then the building systems condition perform and performance, those were in both the inventory and the assessment. So because I I'm putting them in the first phase in the in inventory. I didn't think it was necessary to repeat that for the assessment phase, but um, you know, somebody who is doing this work might be able to uh, give you more information on whether that makes sense from their perspective of whether it should be part of the inventory or the assessment. Uh, Senator Perslick. Yeah, I had a question about B on page three, the list there, which mm -hmm. I think was in the original bill as passed by the House. 
it just seems a little weird to me that we're mentioning Steam and not other programming, they call it that, or, you know, educational services. Do you, I don't know if you were involved at all, why they felt necessary to list those things, like. You just uh, mentioned the line, just so I can. It, this is actually line page. one on page four. Yeah. Oh, on page four, okay. Oh, there we go, yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know the, the reason why that was, uh, that was, you know, specifically mentioned. Um, to the extent that that kind of programming requires special classrooms or technology or labs, that might be That's one what of I'm the thinking. things they're looking at. Is that um, are you going to prioritize how to make sure that schools have that those facilities in their buildings? Um, as opposed to another kind of programming, which might not need specific um, well, math, infrastructure. Like what, what do you need to teach math? Oh, here we go. Here's a challenge. They're always, they're, so, Senator Perch, oh, like a whiteboard? I, I don't <laughs> you need a whiteboard. <laughs> Chalk? Well, it, but it, they're always sort of lumped together, but. Um, so I, it is the infrastructure needs. So you, you may have to have some special um, pipelines for gas or other things uh, included or certain lighting, perhaps. I don't, I, you know, I don't know that you absolutely need special anything for math. You can use your brain, but um, the other ones certainly would. And I guess this is just we're just asking for sufficient information for the General Assembly. We may want to create this ranking system. We may or may not actually create it, but. That's correct. And this is, so if you go back to, and sorry, I, I was not making light of how math is taught in school. I was just trying to no, come no, no, up no. with you're, you're, an you're example. Fine. Yeah, I, you're gonna get email from all the math. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I, <laughs> I'm not an expert on that. I was just, you know, coming up with something else. I can see the headline in Digger um, tomorrow. <laughs> Math mathematicians outraged by Wasserman. So story I, at, story um, at <laughs> Center Lions. I just got a message. It sounds like they're really <laughs> destroying my bill and I'm going to have to leave. Oh, it's okay. just, uh, I'm, I, I really don't want to go back because I'm so upset about what the discussion is. All right. Uh, hopefully we'll get, I, I, and uh, Jeannie, if you would text uh, or reach out to uh, our Rutland folks and say that we, we really need one of them back, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but please go ahead. Sure. So um, I was saying that if you look at the old school construction program, there was a sort of a priority of needs in there. And so I think this is getting at if you know, you do want to come up with a way to provide aid to schools, how would you prioritize that? But you're absolutely correct that this is just information for the General Assembly to be able to do that. You know, you could, of course, prioritize in a different way. And then another question, Chair? Please, yeah. Accessibility, does that, is that clear that that means like accessibility first? disabled or staff students for those that are disabled or is there does that mean other things that's how i read it but um i was reading it yeah in terms of sort of ada compliance right. um there is language in here um on page four subsection e lines 13 to 14 another way i could read accessibility would be sort of how accessible is the school to sort of different, you know, like how far do students have to travel to right. get to that school? And I think that the including um, in, in a database that AOE creates information on the school's sort of coordinates and physical address was getting at that type of accessibility, like location accessibility of the school. Right. Okay. I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, okay, so subsection D, 
it, on page four, line six, is um, allowing the Secretary of Education to use up to 2.5 million um, from the ESSER three funds uh, appropriated, or sorry, allocated to the state. And um, that's to conduct the inventory and assessment. So again, this would be contemplating that this is one, one contract with one contractor who would do both this work. Um, and then as I mentioned in subsection E, AOE would be creating a database to enter all this information so that um, it would not be would not be lost um, and can be used for uh, you know coming up with some kind of plan for a future school construction program if that's what you uh, wish to use it for. Subsection F has um, the secretary submitting a report to the education committees on the findings of the inventory and a progress update on the assessment phase by January 15th of next year. Um, and then finally, subsection G is just that definition of school to mean a public school. Great. Um, and then I think <clears throat> the rest of the amendment, the fourth instance of amendment is just adding in all the sections that you all um, decided to include in the bill that were not in the underlying bill as passed out of the house. So that is um, section eight, which is increasing the, the uh, requirements to advertise for a bid um, from 15,000 to 40,000. Um, section nine is uh, the language about AOE contracting with an independent third party. So this is a different contract um, to, to help them help school districts use the ESSER funds that were allocated specifically to them to do their, their projects relating to health and safety as a result of COVID. So this person is, you know, acting as a sort of a, a liaison between the school district and AOE on those projects. Uh, let's just pause for a moment. Senator Hooker, uh, I, we apologize for having to pull you back, uh, but we uh, are going through H426. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, it, was your meeting almost over or are you all going? Um, it, it should be over within, I'd say 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank for you. Coming. Thank you. I'm sorry. I no, had to miss the part in no, the beginning. It's understandable. Okay. Um, and just as a reminder on page seven here, um, AOE is allocating um, $500,000 from their ESSER three funds to the state for the purposes of hiring this contractor. Um, and they're also putting on reserve a million dollars from that ESSER three allocation to uh, help school districts as needed um, if, if they don't have the funds remaining to complete the projects. Um, and then also just uh, added to this bill would be the municipal energy loan pilot program language, having AOE and BGS um, figure out how, how you can use the municipal energy loan pilot program to support schools for the- uh, Senator Perchley. Um, I thought we were gonna change that a little bit, uh, Ms. Wasserman, that we were gonna say, just in case, the because I know the Senator Appropriations is talking about getting rid of the actual revolving loan part. So if we just called it, if we just said they were going to determine how the state energy management program could help, because the state energy management program was going to manage the municipal okay. energy loan pilot. So I think if we just say how SEM could help with this, that would be enough whether the pilot program is there or not. Does that make sense? Yes. So basically be on uh, line 21, instead of saying municipal energy loan pilot program, say how the state energy management program, and then wherever that's established, shall support schools to implement needed, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can make that change. That'd be great. That's, yeah. Okay. Just in, just in case the loan program is yeah. gone, it, it still holds. Still Um, so section 11 is the language uh, you reviewed yesterday and the um, new grant program within the school indoor air quality grant program. So that is all included here as well. Um, 
And then finally, just the effective date. Uh, so those, those were the changes. Committee, any questions or anybody else that uh, senators would like to hear from on this bill before we have a vote tomorrow? Senator Persley. Did you have any conversations with AOE about this change, Chair? Or? I have not. Um, you know, sometimes we've had AOE back in after we've made some adjustments and, and I'm happy to, we have them coming in tomorrow on other things. So I'm happy to have them weigh in on this uh, sometime tomorrow, which makes sense. It does seem like a kind of a compromise you yeah. know, between the two positions and we'll see. So actually Jeannie, would you have, I know Heather Boucher is coming in tomorrow. Uh, would you have uh, Secretary French also come in on the new version of 426? I, I will send him the request, yep. Thanks. Senator Chinden. I my apologies if you already covered this, but I uh, for the $2.5 million, do we have an idea how much that is out of for the entire ESSER allocation? And is that number gonna be a surprise to the AOE or did uh, Secretary French have that 2.5 million as part of his recommended language, I can't recall. Uh, so there was 2.5 million um, in actually SR1 and SR2 funds in the bill that came out of the house. This pot, this is actually coming out of SR3 funds. Um, I talked to JFO this morning and I believe the the pot of SR3 funds that this is coming from, there is a 7 million in there right now. So this would be 2.5 million from that 7 million. Um, and I guess I would add that the house's version had 2.5 million for the assessment. AOE had 500,000 for the inventory, Yeah. but I didn't, I didn't make it 3 million. I just, I made it 2.5 million for both. So I, again, I don't know if that is the appropriate number. Is that a quick follow yeah, up? Yeah, please go ahead. I definitely would. I, I support this. I think this is moving in the right direction, but I, I feel like I, if the secretary or his delegate is available, I'd love to hear his thoughts on the 500,000 versus the 2.5 million and what uh, that might be pulling, possibly pulling away from and, and the other possible priorities that you might have had in mind. But I support the language as, as it's going in the and just, to, just to clarify, these are all the set aside funds that you're referring to, right, Ms. Wasserman? Yeah, so I mean that's correct. So these are these are for us to appropriate uh, according to Steve Klein or joint fiscal. So um, it would really be things that we might determine that might not get funded. Uh, the agency can certainly weigh in, uh, but it's these are not for uh, the agency to spend without legislative approval. And my understanding is that jo the Joint Fiscal Office has a, a tracker on their website of we do. Um, the other projects that SRF yeah. funds are being used for. So um, you can easily see the, the different places that this money is being appropriated to. And I think this particular set aside, my understanding was that there was nothing yet appropriated from that there are different pots of SR3 money, sure. so there was nothing yet appropriated from that pot. Does that help, Senator Chinden? I mean, that you, I don't know if you were here the day, you know, I mean, you've been here every day, but I don't know if, if you may have uh, forgotten or missed the part where when Steve, there was this disagreement between AOE and, um, and the legislature around who gets to appropriate. And I know it, it was quite a discussion in House Ed, it might have been a more muted discussion in Senate Ed, but in the end, we, we felt as though you know, we'll stick with, with our folks at JFO and, and take their recommendation and say that, yes, indeed, that we have that, that authority. Please. I, I was here, and uh, again, I'm the new guy, so trying to figure this out. What, what was unclear to me is yeah. uh, how we, uh, the legislature, if we're the ones allocating this $7 million, what are the other things that this $2.5 million might pull away from? So I haven't seen like the whole, the whole picture of where, this, where the give yeah. and take is on this. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. And it'll be interesting by the end of the session, uh, how much might still be left over. 
Um, you know, we've put money uh, toward a number of different fronts and uh, yeah, we can pull that apart a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, Senator Purcell? Yeah, I think what AOE was saying, not that they were against the full assessment, but that they wanted to wait. So they were like, let's save that two, and two million or whatever it is for later. And we're saying, you now we want to make sure it's a priority and is and that money kind of. So we'll have AOE in tomorrow. Uh, and um, Jeannie, would you also put it put it down as a vote for tomorrow? You may have already done that. Uh, and just so we can make others aware that we are hopefully gonna close out this work. Uh, Ms. Wasserman, would you mind uh, notifying Stephanie that we plan to move this tomorrow? And I'll also let the, if you wouldn't mind copying me on that, uh, and I'll also let Senators Kitchell, Baruth, and Westman in particular know that this is on its way. Um, that would be great, thank you. Yes, I can do that. Anything else? Okay. Ms. Wasserman, thanks a million. Thank you. Thank been you. Incredibly busy for you with everything else going on. So uh, really appreciate you spending time in here. Sure. And um, just so you know, I have this with editing now. I just made that small change for the SEMP program, but I'll get it back to you as soon as it's um, done with editing. Yeah. And you might want to check your Twitter accounts and mathematicians at Cornell are. I'm sorry. Noted, I um, love, I love math. I, I, I was I think, making yeah. a bad joke. <laughs> for the record, we got it. All right. Good. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Great to see you. Uh, committee S100. Uh, uh, Mr. Demaray. Oh, yeah, Jeannie. Never mind. He's here. Okay. <laughs> yep. He is here. I'm here. Um, right. Let me pull this up for you. All right. Let me just grab my pen. Okay, do, do, do you want, want, me, want to change it? Uh, we're, you're breaking up a little bit there, Jim, just so you know. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, perfectly now. Great, okay. This is the Campion Amendment? So, <laughs> so uh, it's, hold on, hold on. Uh, so this is coming from our committee, it's our amendment. So uh, I am happy to, uh, uh, have someone else go first, but it is, I think, our amendment, so we probably should have that represented. Um, does that make sense to everybody, or am I not thinking that through Senator Perchlick? Uh, you're muted. There you go. I, I guess I didn't understand your question about how, how who, the... Well, the so... I just want to make sure we're doing this the right way. This is uh, the Committee on Education's amendment to S100, although it is, uh, I believe, a, it, for all intents and purposes, I mean, it's a strike off. Uh, and we will be presenting it on the floor, um, and our committee is voting on it. So it did strike me as odd to. I, I think our committee should be represented probably first, given that, unless somebody. Uh, is thinking otherwise, or if that does not make sense. No, it makes sense. I just was, my comment was on the agenda called it the Campion Amendment. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Demeray. Okay, uh, for the record, uh, Jim Demeray and Liz Consul, we are walking through draft 6.2. Uh, the floor amendment to S100. We talked about the sponsors, so I'll move on. Um, there are very few changes here. Um, there was a line here um, that has been deleted about, um, or sorry, uh, about the calculation 
on the reimbursement. It's a line that Rosie Kruger said that only applied to uh, universal lunch. So that was, that's been taken out. So you won't see that. Um, so aside from that, let's just see what we did. I think two more changes. We added uh, the appropriation. Um, so we have $8 million here. And we added one other group to consult with in the task force here. So the School of Nutrition Association of, of Vermont was added. And that was it, I think. Oh, October 10th. So we changed the date for the first October 10th. Um, and that was it. Great. Uh, anybody have any questions? And in, in all seriousness, uh, you know, if somebody, uh, you know, I'm happy to present it, but if somebody else is, is interested in that, that person's name, I do think probably should go first and then we can go alphabetical, um, from there. Um, but I do think our committee should be, uh, should be first given that it's from us. Senator Chinman. In my limited experience, I think this would be most powerful from the chair, but if you uh, want this to go to somebody else to present, I'm always happy uh, to share Yeah, no, I, I'm fine with presenting it. Uh, it's, um, it, I really am, I'm, I'm really just, whatever people want to do, uh, that is. Oops. There any questions? Okay. You know, we've worked on this uh, on again, off again for a while. Uh, it's still in finance or it's in finance tomorrow. Not actually, but it, it is being looked at tomorrow. Um, yeah, Senator Chinden. So if this gets passed from the Senate and it goes to the House and languishes there and nothing happens, uh, the same language we can still consider adding to a different bill regarding the study group. And that's not a problem if the same language is in two different bills that goes to the Senate. Yes. And so one of the things that I, I do think, given that the community schools bill has a lot to do with, again, building community, um, enhancing uh, access to a range of things, it seems to me that that language should go on to one of those, uh, to the community schools bill. That study language is, is what I'm thinking at this point. It seems like there is a more of a connection to this bill and then leaving the state board language, those two pieces as uh, onto H101, strike all to their literacy bill, and we would call it, uh, I can't remember what we said, Jim, I think we talked about um, an act relating to the State Board of Education or you know, something, some, yeah. something like that. Since, and that kind of feels cleaner to me. State Board in one piece, diversity in the other agreement, and then incorporate this into the you know, uh, universal, uh, into the um, wraparound schools bill. Senator Perchlick, did you have a question? No. Okay. I guess I do, maybe I thought I was gonna find an answer if I kept reading, but the recommendation that the task force is making, this is page eight lines, you know, it starts on line 10 or whatever. Well, I guess the recommendations are on line 15, page eight. Does it say? who they're recommending this to, well, I guess it's the report, like the recommendations will be in the report. Correct, the report back to you, yeah. Finding you House and Senate education. Yeah, okay. I just didn't read enough. Yeah. And Jim, there's no money in the report, correct? In this study. No, because it's, it's, yeah. I just wouldn't um, want that to, yeah. There's no money in the report because there's no members who are already compensa compensated. Yeah. And just so you know, Senator Chinden, if for some reason uh, 
because I know this is important to you um, and I appreciate that. If for some reason um, H106 got tied up in approps, we could still take that study language and put it into 115 when it comes back this way. That's the miscellaneous idea. So there are, um, there are some different paths. Yeah. But so just my, my objective is that I really hope that study happens this summer. Yeah. Just I'd, I'd hate for it to languish because it seems like it's the right time to really. Yeah, no, I respect that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely want to get that done. Senator Perkler, you're not muted. Anything? I was just wondering if you knew when we'd see the bills from the House. So uh, they are, uh, I know, I believe 114 is on notice. Um, I believe 115 might be on notice tomorrow and 16 might be on notice. I mean, they're, they're in a, pro I mean, they've left their committee and I know 114 is on notice for tomorrow. And I think the others will be on notice this week. Okay. So our plan next week is to do a side-by-side -side of 114 on Tuesday. I think we're doing 115 maybe on Wednesday and then 16 on Thursday, some order like that so that we can decide if we're going to be concurring or who else we need to hear from. Okay. Um, and uh, so transportation, it sounds like you guys have shut down. And so I think everybody else will shut down probably next week. Yeah. So you guys are down to one committee. Okay, both of you. I love the work. Uh, are you fishing for or waiting for a motion on the S100 or are we going to? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm enjoying the conversation, but yeah, no, I totally could. Absolutely. If somebody does want to move uh, our amendment, uh, Senate Education's amendment to S100, uh, I'd welcome that. Can I just say it's a straw vote because it's not in your committee? So it's you a straw it. vote. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Senator Chittenden moves S100, uh, the amendment to S100 from Senate Education. And you others, move. discussion? You can move a straw vote, Jim. That's a lot of sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I think what Jim means, it's it's more than just a straw vote. It's an actual vote. Um, we, we could call the roll. We've called the roll on amendments in the past for even bills that uh, aren't in committee, I think. Yeah, Senator Jim. Since we seems like we have time, just when I hear straw vote, uh, when I've done that before, in like executive session as chair, that's like an informal vote. But a motion is a formal. I, I don't I don't have a. Yeah, I think we can do a formal motion, and then we can we don't need to call the roll. <clears throat> I think we'll be okay with that. So unless there's other discussion or questions, uh, I'd say all those in favor of the amendment, um, say aye or okay, and so. Uh, Let's keep this open and we'll touch base with Ginny and, and Josh. But at this point, uh, 402. Okay. All right, anything else? And then will AG do the same thing or they'll just, since the AG members are- Yeah, no, they're all for it. They're, they're good. They've, they've taken their, their vote. And so uh, they're all on it and also, ready to go. So we'll just wait to hear, uh, Jim, we'll just hold on to this uh, until we hear from uh, finance tomorrow evening. And then um, the one thing we just need to find out is the how the action calendar works when it pulled off. Is it pulled off and it's waits a day or is it pulled off and acted on immediately? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. That's probably yeah, I'll, I'll give Bloomer a call. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody. All right, see you. Yep, see ya. Ryan? Yeah. Do you, hold on, hold on.